Hello everybody and welcome back to the King Fox channel. My name is Matt Conniger and I'm building a Kitbox Model 7 STI. It's over here. So uh, I'm going to interrupt the series of the gear because uh, the rest of my avionics came in and I'm, I want to see what's in the box. So I thought I'd include you guys in the video and then, uh, open up the remainder and see what's, what's in the boxes. All right, and here we've got a GSA 28 unit only. Again, it's been a while since I ordered, so I can't remember what a GSU 28 is. Well, I would say that is an autopilot servo, a GSA 28. So we got one of those in there and some mounting hardware, probably. Hopefully I have a few more of those, because I think I ordered three axis autopilot. This box says FAA 8130-3 tags enclosed. It's an airworthiness approval tag. Looks like a comm radio, possibly a nav comm. Not entirely sure. Let's see. A GNC 255. I'll have to look that up and put put that down below on what it is. It's like Christmas, you don't want to throw away the paper and miss something that's in the box. So here's another GSA 28 unit, so another GSA 28 unit, so that would be the second and third servos for the autopilot. This says it's a GTN 650 XI black standard. So that's going to be the TSO GPS, I do believe. Another 8130 form. I have a, it's like a leather pouch with a thick, probably user's manual in there. Some connectors and some tiny resistors in there, three of them. Some mounting hardware. So that's nice. Um, a little. I did want the GTN 750 with the taller screen, so I'd have a little more real estate for touching and changing frequencies. For those of you that don't want electronic stuff in your cockpit, then this probably wouldn't be for you. Uh, I'm kind of fascinated by it. Um, but anyway, so there's a GTN 650. I know I got a Navcom in there, and then I wanted an additional Navcom, so I'm pretty sure that's what the other. Uh, that first electronic unit was that I pulled out. So I'll see what's in this box and then I got one more to go. GSU 25 Charlie unit only. Feels pretty light. 
Maybe it's just a box of foam. Oh. Maybe that's Ahars. It's got three connections on the back, black. Well, I'm gonna leave it in there for now. So yeah, I think that's possibly Ahars, but again, I'll GSU 25 Charlie, so I'll put whatever it is down below here shortly. I think this is what I was waiting on for so long, the GTX 45R. I believe that's the remote transponder. And this box is very light also. And another, what is it? All right, GSU 25 Charlie. So if that is AHARS, I'd have two of them, but I don't think I need two AHARS. So anyway, GSU 25 Charlie unit, one unit. Unit's got the three tabs on the back and uh, some serial connections down there. I'm gonna leave it in the container for now. Definitely remote. It's got some serial connections on the back here and possibly a serial connection. It's got a port that's covered with a dust cover that looks like it's spring loaded. So that is going to be remote, remote mounted. Uh, probably go probably stack just above the 650 in the dash someplace or I guess I could mount it in the back if I need ballast, something like that. Um, so that's going to satisfy the remainder of my avionics and I think I listed some prices on the previous video when I received, I listed the full price that I paid for my avionics which was in the realm of $37,000 I think um, and when I got the first set of boxes I, I thought it was everything but then I found out from Deborah that I did not get everything and that I had another box remaining and March March 16th or something was the was the final ship date and I ordered in May of last year so if that gives you an idea of some lag times if you want to if you want to order your avionics and get them ahead of time order them ahead of time um, so I'll probably stack these boxes in the in the house next to the other boxes avionics because I'm not yet ready for avionics probably won't be for a while but it's nice to have them all here so that when I get there, I can start to put them in and build harnesses or do whatever it is I need to do to get everything connected and fit into the panel. So another thing I need to do is find my panel and lay everything out. Um, when I was at the Kit Fox drive-in in June of last year, the, the Garmin rep did help me. He put stickers up on a panel of a Kit Fox that was in the hangar, built, ready to go for Oshkosh. So he said everything I have here will fit. Um, if I have any extra space, I'll probably find something to stick in there. Um, but I would like to put useful items in there. I am going to put, I think, recessed head jacks in, but I think I'm going to mount those in the in the side panels of the of the center console. Um, I would like the headphone jacks up front, and then I do want to add in some USB power sources. So probably USB C, maybe one USB A. I don't know why we're still using those when most things have gone to C, but. A couple of USB-C powers, power outlets. I know Garmin makes some, but they're, I want to say they're mid 200s, if not $300 for two USB outlets that say Garmin on them. So if I can find something else that's high voltage or wattage, 
um, so I can charge an iPad while I'm flying, I'll do that. Aside from that, I guess I just wanted to share that with you guys and uh, let you see what, what the remaining avionics were that I was gonna put into the airplane. So using the new workbench again, really liking that. It's got that solid table on it, got some brakes down there on the rolling casters and uh, um, it's nice to be able to work higher and not have to bend over and see what you're doing. So thanks for stopping back and I'll see you guys on the next episode. Hopefully it will be the remainder It'll be the final video of me putting the gear on and getting that all together. So stay tuned and thanks for coming back. Have a great day.